gonna talk about uh, superchargers tonight. And so sitting on a bench here, we just got these in last week. This is the, the newest Magnuson 2650 for LSA LS3. And this is the underhood mount. So a couple years back, they came up with the that real tall version that everyone was cutting their hoods for. And we, we did a couple cars with them on them, make good power, just like the, the uh, 6th Gen 2650s do. So this is designed around fitting underneath the hood of uh, ZL1 5th Gens and 5th Gen SSs. So you can see it's got this cutout back here for the cowl. The, you know, the cowl on those Camaros sits like, you know, like right here. Same with the LSA blowers. It, it comes kind of covers up the back of the supercharger. So we're really excited about these. We got we got a couple of them in and we're going to be putting this one on a, a customer's car as soon as we can get a fuel system for it. Um, he's kind of been waiting for the next stage on this thing and it's a car. I had on uh, my channel, if you watch my channel, I had a dyno video on it oh, a couple months back. Um, car came in, it was for sale. One of our good customers bought it and he's been racing it all summer and he's ready for the next step. So we're gonna be putting this thing on. Um, I'm really excited to get, get our hands on these. The, uh, we didn't have a whole lot of demand for the other one because of the hood fitment. You either had to cut the stock hood or a couple hood we you know way back on my channel there was a white one that we did uh we we cut the hood and then we put it ended up putting a copo hood on it and it made really good power it made unlocked it made like 850 um on e85 i like 14 pounds of boost because he wanted the the ability to flex fuel back and forth so we didn't crank the boost real hard on this one this car um we might kind of have an e85 only setup on it so we're going to push it a little harder so i'll walk back to the dyno i got it strapped to the dyno we're just going to do a quick baseline on it one more time and kind of walking through our shop here you guys probably haven't ever seen a tour of our shop or we're always so swamped with stuff we got just stuff everywhere so come back this smoky and the bandit so this might look familiar, again, 2013 ZL1. This car has our, kind of our, it's our stage two package. So um, this is kind of our basic stage two package for fifth gen ZL1 LSA cars. Um, our stage one cam, um, it's basically the stage two package consists of us getting into the engine, a camshaft and um, valve train upgrades. So headers, it's got two inch headers on it. American Racing Nikki Edition headers, uh, upper and lower pulleys, uh, 255 upper, 91 lower, I think 917 lower. This has a CAI cold air box on it. Um, this is pump gas. Nothing real crazy about this. It still has a stock inlet, stock throttle body. Um, this is kind of our basic camshaft upgrade, so just our small cam. Nothing crazy with the inlet, no five inch intake, um, no big throttle body, no supercharger porting, no heat exchanger. Um, and I think this car made 670 ish before. Again, I'm gonna run it. I'll, we'll do a pull right here right now. It does have a, a tank on it just to add some capacity, but it still has the stock heat exchanger on it. So with that big supercharger, we're gonna upgrade to a KTEC 103 throttle body and a big gulp Rotofab five inch cold air. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do a four triple pump uh, in tank setup. So take stock fuel pump out, stock fuel pump basket and everything out. Put one of four innovations triple pump hangers in there. Triple 450s. Um, the, the 274 pumps good for E85. We're gonna put our 1200 injectors in it. Flex fuel sensor and. Um, obviously, we'll run it back on the dyno. So, um, everything else is going to stay in place. Our stage one cam, the headers, uh, uh, everything there is going to stay in place. That stuff is all good for big power. So, um, so yeah, that's that's kind of where we're going with this one. This car, as it sits right here, has run a best of 1043, 1045, something like that. Um, in decent DA, I think that was 1200. He, he's been back at the track in... 
you know, 3000 DA, it's a 1050 some car, maybe I think it was like 1058, 1055, he ran a bunch of 1050s with it when the DA was meh, summer, you know, humid, humid DA stuff, so, um, and he does a lot of screwing around in the street with it and stuff too, he has a ton of fun with it, so, um, so yeah, again, he's ready for that next level, and again, you can port the LSA blowers, they work really good, and, um, but this car doesn't have ported heads, um, we just feel like that that 2650 is the next logical step for this particular car and he runs a drag pack on it i got the 2010 um 2010 rims with just some dookie pirelli tires on there for the dyno because he he runs a mickey thompson r and those things just get crazy chewed up in the dyno so let's jump in here let's make a pull on it we're just going to do a quick pull on it make sure that Everything still looks good from a power standpoint. We always do this on all of our builds. Even if it's a known car and we know it runs good, we always just want to get a baseline. So when we, you know, it basically goes from the dyno here, it's going to go under the knife. We're going to pull everything apart. And when we go back with the new supercharger on the dyno, we're basically apples to apples comparison. We got no variables with, you know, time of year, weather, or anything crazy like that. So I, I drove this car around the block, warmed it up a little bit before I strapped it down. So I'm pretty warm right now. I'm gonna get it spun up here and uh, turn the traction control off. does have a circle d 3200 converter in it which works really nice this car this car cuts low 1460 foots the way it sits right now um, full weight just the slick the, the drag pack is really the only thing that's that's weight reduced on this car um, it's got the full interior it's got you know there's there's nothing crazy about this car so so I'm just gonna get the coolant temp oil temps 160 I'm just gonna bring the coolant temp up Actually, I'm just gonna hit those fans quick. Just to give us a little airflow through the heat exchanger. That's all important on these LSAs, of course. see where we get the power numbers again this I did I had another video on this car back oh I don't know I had to go back on my channel it was a couple videos ago um, so nothing new here you now I'm seeing that was 23 and a half degrees of timing we're seeing at 13 pounds of boost so knock sensors were quiet look everything looking good on the tune and the engine looks like the power was about where we expected about 660 SAE. That was definitely not anything cold or anything. The IETs were like 120 for the IET2. So that's our baseline for this car with this package. And like I 
said, I'm just gonna hit these fans. This car was a you know mid-10 car in the summer heat, so so I'm hoping to see at least a 200 wheel gain. I hate making predictions and throwing numbers out there on, on future stuff we do to cars, but since we've done this before um, with the 2650 rotor pack, um, that's kind of what I'm expecting. So the last car I had on here made 850 unlocked with a single disc yank converter. This is a triple disc circle D, so I can lock this converter. So um, the other car did have ported heads and our stage two cam. So that is worth, definitely worth some power over just our stage one cam stock head deal. But um, we might push the boost a little further on this one than the other car. So um, 15, 16 pounds and more of a just E85 only when you're out racing and having fun with it. So. So that'll do it for this portion of the video. We're gonna get this car torn down, get the fuel system installed, get that bigger blower on it, and kind of see where we end up from there. Um, so stay tuned. Take a look at that in a sec. So this is where we're at so far. So that's 777. That was pump gas. At about you know the top here, we're seeing 15 to 16 pounds. And I might actually switch a pulley out here. We might maybe shoot for a little, a little bit more. Maybe another pound of boost is what I like to see. I was trying to go for on this car. We were trying to shoot for about 850. So pretty much all there on the timing. I added a little bit up here. It made a little bit more power, but based on what I've, you know, on these other, on these LSA engines and other combinations I've done with this boost, I think we're pretty much in it for boost in like mid 20, 25, 26. So, so that's where I'm at so far. So we might uh, swap out the lower ring for a, uh, it's got a ATI balancer on it right now with a 866 lower and I have a 917 inch lower pulley sitting on the shelf over there and I might swap that out quick um, I think I got a belt that'll work so and we'll see if we can get up to you know 850 860 something like that we're trying to get this car solid mid nines 960s 70s somewhere in there so this will get us there for a full weight car pretty close but we want to be we want to make sure so other than that, the dyno, let's go over what we got now under the under the hood of this thing. So you can see it looks looks different from earlier in the video. Um, so this is Magnuson's new underhood 2650 for LS3 LSA for port, rectangular port LS stuff. So pretty cool, pretty cool looking unit. Big huge cooler in in the lid the whole lid you know the basically the cooler is as wide as the lid you can see it's got dual in and out it's kind of a the cooler is all one piece but it, i believe it's it's got like a split down the middle where where you're flowing one half to the other so and we also added a return style fuel system to this so um, in tank, this is a four innovation system, triples, uh, triple 450s, so it's kind of future proof. You know, in case he wants to ever wants to do a motor in this thing, and then we crank this, you know, crank this blower. These blowers on a 427 kind of cranked up 20, 22 pounds of boost will make 1100 wheel. So someday he may want to do that, we don't know, but we kind of. When we, when we order those fuel systems, the upgrade to the triple pump is not a whole lot more. So we usually just do it anyway, just in case somebody wants to uh, go further in the future. So that's what we did. 
Um, I still got to tie a couple things up, so mine the the fuel hoses are kind of are kind of just snaked through here for now. I'm going to probably loom these in a little better, but for now. Um, it's working and it's working really nice. We also added a five inch Rotofab and a KTEC 103 millimeter throttle body. So as of now, for some reason, Magnuson does not make a 103 inlet for this style uh, 2650. They make the 90 millimeter inlet, which is what this is, and they make a 112 inlet for the huge, big, huge throttle bodies. So I had to port this inlet to, to match the 103. I had to actually go inside and it out so it'll fit that 103 throttle blade through there. Um, otherwise, we didn't change anything else. We changed the intake, the supercharger, the fuel system, uh, and FIC 1440 injectors. That's it. So, still got the same cam in it. Our stage one heads are stock on this car. Our two inch headers hooked to a stock cat back, the dual mode. Um, and that's pretty much it. So, It is a cool looking blower. It, you know, it's not quite as wide and kind of breathtaking as when you pop the hood as a six gen one, but I still think it looks cool. It's got that tall lid on it. And uh, it definitely makes more power. I mean, we picked up, so this car made 670 stock. Or I shouldn't say stock, but with our previous mods to try to find Yeah, 660. Now, I know that's that's gas to E85, but still, that's just to give you an idea where we're going, where we're headed so far. So that blue is when it was the stock supercharger with the cam and the headers and the you know we had a. 13 PSI combination for a pulleys, a four inch Rotofab, or sorry, a four inch CAI, uh, cold air inductions. And so that's where it was. And this is where we are now with the fuel system and the blower swap. And that's the, that's just kind of the, the, the power of adding that big blower, adding a little bit of boost. We added two, three pounds of boost and the fuel. So, and we're not done yet. So that's just kind of where we're at so far. So I'm going to, uh, I think I'm gonna swap this pulley out. All right, guys, we're back. So I had a 917 lower pulley, but I wasn't able to put it on because the 917, you gotta do a relocation bra bracket for the idler. And I don't have one of those. So what I did have, which I found, which I got ahead, I got an 85 millimeter upper pulley for 2650. Um, and Magnuson being the nice guys that they are, they make all the 2650 pulleys the same now for 5th and 6th and gen. So this is for a, originally a uh, GripTech uh, ZPE pulley that I had for a 6th gen 2650. Um, and so I threw that on there, got a belt, had to order a belt, got one delivered, and we're in business. So this should not... I'm assuming about two more pounds of boost. So it did have a 90 millimeter upper on it from Magnuson. Um, that 85, usually when we're going 90 to 85, we get about two pounds of boost. So that's what I'm hoping to see. Hoping to get to about 18, 17 and a half, 18, somewhere in there. And that's gonna get us uh, to where we need to be horsepower wise, where I wanted to be on this car. So um, I might have to do one or two kind of working pulls, make sure I'm going to pull a little bit more timing out of it. We're, we're starting to get into that zone where even on E85, we got to be careful with the timing um, just because we don't want to hurt parts. Once we start getting past that 850 mark, we got you got to start being a little bit. I mean, LSAs and LS9s are, are pretty tough motors from the factory. Basically, this, you know, basically the strongest factory engine you can buy, LT4s, you know, you need to supercharge stuff in the factory, but you still gotta be careful when you start leaning on stuff. I know these you know, guys make over a thousand wheel with these. I've never pushed one of these that far, mid 900s, but it's that point where it starts to get a little bit touchy with the timing. So I go towards conservative, pull a little more out, and then I can work it back in, but I'm gonna pull a couple degrees out. I was mid 20s, I wanna see 23, maybe 24, something like that. So, um, so yeah, stay with us. 
I'm gonna spin this thing up a couple more times and we'll see what kind of power with the smaller pulley. just got to where I wanted to be. So I did do a couple pulls before this one off camera. Um, I, I took those back down just because they were working on just to make sure the feeling and timing was, was good. But there's our final, I'm gonna leave it at that 851. And that's that 837 is that last pull we did on that 90 millimeter pulley. So, so that's, uh, that's looking pretty good. I think it would have made a little bit more if I would have taken it up a little further, but I'm starting to see the boost really kind of take off up above 68, 6900, and we're just hitting the limit of probably a bunch of stuff. Well, I shouldn't say a bunch of stuff. I think we're hitting the limit of our smaller cam for sure. And this car does still have the stock catback system on it, which is two and a half ish diameter stuff and this car really should have a dual three inch with a with a three inch x-pipe on it we're at that we're definitely beyond that anything beyond like 750 800 wheel a 300 uh, a dual three inch exhaust really benefits so we're really pushing the limits of stock exhaust so i'm happy with that this is going to be a, a solid you know, this should get us mid nines with this car at, at basically full weight. We got a rear seat delete going in it, and he he runs around on slicks and skinnies. Otherwise, the car's got AC, it's got the stock front seats, it's still got all the, all the stock suspension, the sway bar. Um, there's nothing crazy about this car as far as being, it being a race car. It's still got all the creature comforts of a ZL1. So, so we can kind of go back through here. I know this video is a little longer and so what we can do is how this is how the car came in so that is with the stock blower our stage one cam a, a CAI cold air a ported throttle body two inch headers and basically a thermostat I gotta try to remember here how I did this, but. All right, bear with me guys. I gotta try to remember which runs were which. Just so I wanna get all this stuff up. That was some of my working runs on E85. Okay, there it is. So, how it came in. Oh boy. So the 777, that is pump gas. Yeah, okay, again, that was pump gas, which is the supercharger swap. So that was the supercharger, the big throttle body, and the five inch cold air on pump gas. That's where we were there at 16 pounds of boost. So then we went to the 85. And that's our E85 number on 16 pounds of boost, 837. And it really is an E85, it's like E65 right now. Kind of sucks, Lo the local station close to us that carries ethanol. In the winter time, the blend is way down. It's I drain this this thing completely empty and put 
15 gallons from that. I went up to that station, got 15 gallons from there, and it's coming up to 65%, but that's just the way it is. Um, so we might have gained a little bit more with full 80% or so. And then, so then there's our final, adding a few pounds of boost. I know it's getting a little busy up there, but you can kind of see the progression of how, uh, what we've done to this car. We did the camshaft and, and the headers and the other stuff, I want to say four or five years ago. And the car went from a customer, an older customer of ours to a newer customer of ours now. Um, so the car switched hands and that's why we always baseline, that's what a 659 was. So, so yeah, that is that. That'll pretty, pretty much do it for this car. I gotta do a little bit of street tuning. And again, that's our final. I'm liking that. Now, you know, with these 2650s, again, you could, uh, if you had ported heads and the bigger cam and big exhaust, I think we'd be over 900 wheel at the same pulley ratio. But this is where we're at with this combination, and this is still going to be a pretty quick car. So. look at that I'm gonna pull it off the dyno go drive it around have a little break in the weather today mid-November in, in uh, northern Illinois so it's like 50 degrees out so I'm gonna take advantage of that get it on put the uh, put the tires back on it and go drive it around a little bit just to make sure the drivability is there obviously a fuel system switch and bigger injectors and fuel change and all that stuff we gotta Drivability is just as important as, as, as anything else for us, so that'll do it for this one, guys.